This is the Kennedy Space Center, Skylab News Center. The countdown for the launch of Skylab 2, scheduled for 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Friday, began on schedule at 5.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time today. After installation of flight batteries in the Saturn 1B second stage and instrument unit, batteries will be powered up and a series of tests of flight control, radio frequency, and telemetry systems will be initiated. Loading of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in the command service module is scheduled for later today. The National Weather Service Space Flight Meteorology Group said this morning that satisfactory weather is expected for the launch of Skylab 2 on Friday morning. Although there is a strong likelihood of afternoon and evening thunder showers on Thursday, countdown activity should not be greatly affected and such thunderstorms would dissipate during the night. On Friday morning, scattered clouds are expected in the launch area with visibility of about 8 miles, southwest winds 10 miles per hour and temperature about 78 degrees. Near normal conditions are expected over the usually cloudy North Atlantic, but should be of no particular concern to the launch. Skylab 2 crew members Charles Conrad, Joseph Kerwin, and Paul White arrived at Kennedy Space Center late yesterday. This morning they are undergoing their F-2 medical examinations, and this afternoon they're scheduled for a bench review of items to be stowed in the command module and a stowage briefing. The tools to be used by the crew in work on the solar array and the twin pole solar shield that would be deployed from the command module by Joseph Kerwin during a stand-up EVA are scheduled to arrive at Kennedy Space Center about 12.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time today. The tools were developed by the Johnson Space Center and the Marshall Space Flight Center and the twin pole solar shield by the Marshall Space Flight Center. The parasol solar shield that will be deployed by Paul White from the Workshop Scientific Airlock is scheduled to arrive at Kennedy Space Center later today. The parasol was developed by Johnson Space Center. to Skylab Control at zero hours GMT. The Skylab space station is now in its 149th revolution, midway through the nighttime part of its orbit about the Earth. The spacecraft will continue a 68 degree pitched up attitude for one additional daylight pass ending at Vanguard. Then at about 119 Greenwich Mean Time or 819 PM Central Daylight Time, commands will be sent to return the spacecraft to a lower pitch 45 degrees up, so that batteries can be recharged by the Apollo telescope mount solar cells. The pitched up attitude has already brought some temperatures down in the workshop area where film and food are stored. Floor level food storage areas are now estimated to be at 125 degrees, while wall areas are estimated at 127.5 degrees. Of the 25 atmospheric gas temperature transducers recorded on mission control displays, 12 continue to read off scale high or above 120 degrees. Other readings vary from 55.9 in the multiple docking adapter to 116.6 on the experimental compartment ceiling. The suit umbilical system coolant loop, aluminum tubing filled with water, is still recording 34.0 degrees Fahrenheit. A temperature increase is expected during the coming night as a result of the SUS Habitation Area Reset Attitude Maneuver now underway. A fluctuation in the output of Charger Battery Regulator Module number 17, that's CBRM number 17, which indicated an electrical output of about one half the normal level, then accelerated to more than normal output, has now stopped. This Charger Battery Regulator Module is now producing at a normal level and is expected to cause no further problems. We're approaching the one minute mark in our countdown mark. T minus one minute. One minute and counting in the launch of the first manned mission in Skylab. T minus 50 seconds. T minus 50 seconds and counting. And we are now going to internal power. All stages switching to internal power. Stages now and, and fuel tanks pressurized. Approaching the 30 second mark in the countdown. At 30 seconds, Water will begin spraying on the deck of the mobile launcher. T minus 30 seconds, and the countdown continuing to go smoothly. The Skylab itself orbiting some 780 nautical miles northeast of KSC at this time. T minus 17 seconds and counting. T minus 15. 
At T minus 3.1 seconds, we'll expect the engine sequence to start on the vehicle. T minus 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Engine sequence start. 2, 1, 0. We have launch commit and we have liftoff. Seven and one half hours ago, three Skylab astronauts, Pete Conrad, Joe Kerwin, and Paul Weitz, rocketed into space from Cape Kennedy and began the pursuit of their space station. Now they are coming up on the crippled Skylab and are going to maneuver around it to have a good uh, close look at all the damage inflicted on it. We expect television pictures from the astronaut spacecraft momentarily. Jules? Over the Pacific, Frank, over the hill. A Skylab 1 command module with astronauts Pete Conrad, Dr. Joe Kerwin, and Paul White is now within 35 and a half miles of the Skylab space station. They have it in sight. They're viewing its tracking lights. They can't very well see it, see it too well at this moment because they're still in darkness. They'll pick it up as they come to Pacific sunrise over Guam, and that's where, that's where we should have our first television picture from. They're orbiting at the same altitude, roughly, as Skylab, about 229 by 235 miles, a circular orbit over the Earth. They're in good shape. All their rendezvous burns went just perfectly, and they're set up to move in close and see just what condition Skylab is in. Uh, here's Pete Conrad coming in and air to ground now. There's a picture. And there's a picture. There's Skylab. 